bearings are a way of describing the direction of motion. And this is done by taking an angle from the northern direction in a clockwise direction. Therefore, if you're moving in an eastern easterly direction, your bearing would be 90 degrees. Because you're standing at this point, you're facing north. In order to face your required direction of motion, you'd have to go around 90 degrees. Similarly, if you're going due south, then your bearing is 180 degrees. Because you're standing at this point, facing north, and you rotate until you face your desired direction of motion. I think you can tell by now that going west is a bearing of 270 degrees and going north is a, is a bearing of zero. Usually we use three digits to represent bearings. So this is zero, zero, zero. This is zero, 90. This is 180, and this is 270. If you're going in this direction, for example, what is the bearing? This is done by measuring the angle. And it's obvious that this angle is 60 degrees. So this is a bearing of 0, 060 degrees. And so if you're going at a bearing that is less than 90, you're going in a direction between the north and the east. If your bearing is an obtuse angle, then you're going between an easterly and a southerly direction. And if your bearing is a reflex angle, then you're going either between south and west or between west and north. Now, sometimes bearings are used to Describe the direction that takes you from one point to the other. So if you're standing at A and you want to go to B, you would say that the direction of B from A is whatever. So if you say that the bearing of B from A, that means that you're standing at A and you're looking towards B. The bearing between those two points, the bearing of B from A is this. And let's measure it. And this looks like 50 or so. So, <clears throat> if this is 50, and let's just use angles rather than bearings, um, then we can tell without measurement what the bearing of A from B is. If we're talking about the bearing of A from B, that means that we're standing at B. And the bearing in this case would be starting from the north to the face, the line of direction, the line of direction of motion. Then we are talking about something that is greater than 180 degrees. Now we know that 
the north and the north are parallel lines. So this angle here, right here, is 50 degrees because those two angles are corresponding angles. And we know that this angle is 180 degrees. So the bearing of A from B is 230 degrees. So this is A from B and the 50 is the bearing of B from A. If the positions are a little bit different, we can run the same exercise again. And to go from A to B, this is the direction of motion. And obviously, the bearing of B from A is going to be an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90. So, this is the bearing of B from A. And if we measure the angle now, it seems to be something like a hundred and thirty. So if this is a hundred and thirteen degrees, which is the bearing of B from A, then we can ask the question, what is the bearing, the bearing of A from B, which is this angle. Now obviously this bearing is 360 degrees minus this. But what's this? North and north are both parallel. Those two are co-interior angles and they are supplementary, i.e. they add up to 180 degrees. So this is 67 degrees. Therefore, the bearing of A from B is 360 minus 67 degrees, which gives us 293 degrees. And this is the bearing of A from I'll leave, I'll leave this as a question to you. Just as an exercise, let's look at how we can represent bearings on, on a map. If a plane is going from Cairo to Larnaca and Cyprus, then it's obvious that the bearing that you start your journey with is quite small. If the plane then takes off and goes to Basra, And finally, if the plane goes from Basra to Amman. For the first part of the journey, this is the bay. Can be measured, but it's obviously acute because the plane is going between the north and, and the east. For this part of the journey, 
the bearing of Basra from Larnaca is an obtuse angle. However, the bearing of Amman from Basra is a reflex angle that is also greater than 270. So let's apply. If a car leaves a point A and moves for 7 kilometers at a bearing of 30 to reach B, and then it changes direction and moves at, at, a, at a bearing of 120 degrees for 11 kilometers to reach C, we want to find the distance between A and C and to find the bearing of C from A. The best thing to do is to start with a sketch. going at the bearing of 30, so roughly speaking, this is your first direction of motion, and this would be 30 degrees, and this distance is 7 kilometers. Now at this point, the car changes direction. So we have our north again. And the car then moves at a direction of, at the bearing of uh, 120 degrees for 11 kilometers. So we're talking about something like so. Where this is 120 degrees. And this is 11 kilometers. Now, our problem is how do we find the distance between A and C? Obviously, this is the point A, this is the point B, and this is the point C. We can connect with A and C to make a triangle. We know two sides, 11 kilometers and 7 kilometers, but what about the angles? Angle C is unknown. Angle A is unknown, and be careful, this brown line does not match the axis. So, let's think about the angle B. This part is 30, because it's, correspond it's corresponding with this 30. So, this is 30 degrees. Let's remove that. So this is 30 degrees, let's put back 7 kilometers, and because this is 120 degrees, what remains of this part is an angle of 60 degrees, because we know that the straight line is 180 degrees, so this is 60 degrees. Now together, the 30 and the 60 make up a 90 degree angle. This is a right angle. So we can apply Pythagoras. And in this case, AC is equal to the square root 
of 11 squared plus 7 squared. And this gives us the square root of 121 plus 49, and that equals 13.04 kilometers to two significant to two decimal places. And let's put this piece of information in here. Now, part B says, what is the bearing of C from A? Meaning, we are standing at A and we are looking at C. And if we sketch this bearing, we would be looking at this angle up to the brown line. It is not the angle inside the triangle. It's the angle from the north to the line AC, the, the uh, side AC. So if we can find the angle inside the triangle, then we can work out the bearing. So the angle BAC is in a right angle triangle. The opposite is 11 kilometers. The adjacent is 7 kilometers. So the angle BAC equals tan inverse of 11 over 7. And this can be worked out as fifty-seven point five degrees. So the angle the bearing of C from A is thirty plus fifty seven point five, and that gives you eighty seven point five degrees. Now, obviously, according to my sketch, the bearing seems to be greater than ninety. But then, did I accurately measure this angle as 30? Did I accurately scale the 7 and the 11? No, I didn't. This just remains a sketch, and this is something that we have to live with when we are sketching things roughly. They are just indicative, and we cannot uh, conclude accurate uh, answers from them.